bit of work no doubt for Doom Bros yesterday. And today, well, he has it all to do overall. FPX, last result they had against Team Liquid was a loss. And a lot of it had to do with Haven. A new company strategy came out of them with the Viper, with Yampi on the Killjoy. More straightforward and vanilla, I suppose, out of Team Liquid here. But it's still not going to be an easy run for them. They've got to bring it back. One down. If there's a weapon made for Yampi and Scream, I would say it is the Guardian. Th those are one-tap machines, basically, and who else than Scream specifically can play this weapon? It's it, basically, okay, is there a weapon we can make for Scream? Oh yeah, it's the Guardian. He's managed to make it work. You could say the same with the Jet overall, too. And FPX this time, it wasn't a close round. They didn't get the spike planted. There's no point forcing up, so they're just going to hold on to these guns. Spike and now scream. The headshot machine on the headshot gun. <laughs> really is one <laughs> shot, one kill. And even a crouching <laughs> opponent in shadow. He can't do anything. It's going to take the top of your head clean off. And I guess that was the main concern for Team Liquid. How are they going to look? They're not really warmed up today. Nope. Well, Scream certainly has. <laughs> I mean, you, you gotta say, basically a headshot machine with the headshot machine. Perfect stuff. Liquid starting off decently. But a solid 2-0 lead, and obviously it's their pick. I mean, the story goes on and on. We saw teams like Ascent previously struggle on their opponent's map pick. It's such an easy thing to say, and at the same time, obviously. It, Haven, being a map that has worked decently in the past oh, i mean nice it wasn't looking yes, too nice in iceland in some situations but there. nevertheless they have adapted they have there. changed their lineup a little bit and obviously breach on both sides this guy yeah, has yeah. profited yeah i could say so let's see which of these two teams joins the likes of obviously ascend as we saw earlier as guild as they beat fanatic 2-1 uh, fanatic versus g2 is on another stream you can check out all of the details, no doubt, in the chat. Those kind of things. And also, congratulations to Gambit and Oxygen that mm -hmm. qualified from CIS and Turkey, respectively. So nice little look from them. Four out of the eight teams. Oh, no, wait. That's that's wrong. Four teams out of how many will be qualified. It's been a long day. Oh and I'm really worried about Angel here as he's about uh -oh. to get peeked on. A nice little pop flash and a good trade-out from Xiao, but Scream is dead to follow up, too. Yeah, they pretty much made that trade work easily. Uh, he's just avoiding the cam. Waits until he hears the sound again. He's being baited. And he thinks about making the move. But once he's back in the corner, <laughs> they don't know. They just don't know. Demon 6, has, Demon 6 has found the perfect spot and just remains there. He's waiting patiently to get his team over here. But it's 30 seconds. They got to be swift. And the player is back on the B side. They're definitely going to hear it, Ryan. Seconds left. Yeah, they might hit the rotate away. Unless Dimmer 6 spotted a gap to exploit. It really is just that. No information to garner. But at some point, Dimmer 6 is going to be sat in place. He's going to have to show his position. With 10 seconds left, nobody's really going to be there to stop left. despite being planted. But here comes the execution in, playing off of that camera that is still up, by the way, from Cryptix. He's going to hang on to it. That's a useful info. And luckily, Zipan manages to clear it out. I just wanted to say it's about time that this thing gets destroyed. And FPX. Forever. They got at least some control of the side. But in the meantime, it's shots coming through. But they both change and exchange uh, that through what? the cage. And well, in the meantime, I'm taking it back. It's obviously Scream. Who's turning this one around massively? A quad coming in. Is he sticking to the Guardian? No, unfortunately. It's very like Team Liquid to be able to know which guns are in season. They were very much hot on it with the Judge and the Ampi, all of those plays. Seems that it is the season of the Guardian playing through. A scream is 8 and 0. I'm pretty sure all with that gun. And an early timeout needed for FPX. Yeah, things could go really sour today. And a 3 0 start on this map it isn't the best look, and an eco is yet again required. The thing is, I wanted to ask you, Ryan, what, which round will you see a timeout from FPX coming in? I forgot it. But I'm sure you would have said round three. Four. I mean, it makes sense. 
it's mentally resetting these players. It gives Doom Bros a bit of a look at what Team Liquid are trying to do. Each team's run on their own protocols, on their own styles. And clearly, if you've been scrimming and watching this team a considerable amount, you'll know what to keep an eye out for. Unfortunately, there isn't much to shut down Scream when he's running at you with a Guardian. But luckily, Scream's upgraded to a Phantom. Yeah, I mean... Shutting down a Scream oh, when he's having a good nice day spot. are pretty much impossible. It's, it's him on his own that has... I would say it's not even skill at this point. It's a blessing for Scream that he can pretty much understand situations in a way that he absolutely knows the outcome of them. I have to say it's it's one of a kind with him. It's really one of a kind with him, but obviously there are four other players who also have to maintain control of the all the other sides. He knows there was a cam around him. A good bit of control already gained by him. Yeah, Scream's trying to play further up on A-Lobby. The camera goes on the other side, more towards long. Now, Link trying to respond with utility. Scream looking for this duel against Dimisic. Just has the perfect timing. There's very little you can do there as the Cypher. The rest of FBX with these guns making their way in onto side, but every duel, one by one, is being lost. Soulcast tries to take a peek off of the flash and does so. Knows that Shadow's playing in close. And this is clean from Team Liquid. They're prepped for this game. Shadow's the last alive, and he's near enough surrounded. At least he makes it a bit more costly, but Soulcast gets the free. I just very much hope it's FBX who are not running out of fuel at this point. It would be a shame to see them running out of fuel. Sure, the, the, the slight difference is Team Liquid coming into this game with the success of winning against BDS a, a little little earlier on, obviously yesterday, to be frank and accurate. And that, that's maybe the kind of reset that is doing so well for them. It's always a yeah. thing that you cannot really estimate, you cannot really figure yeah, out. Is it good that, that I have played before or not? Yes. Pretty much, I guess, imagine every team is somewhat individual on that. But so far, it seems like the rest is working well for Liquid. 12 teams in the EMA playoffs. I just managed to do the maths now. I think I think that scene at play from Elliot melted my brain a little bit. But here's a bit of a buy from FPX, and the execute is there to boot. The Bladestorm for Scream is online, but other than that, he just has the yeah. Sheriff in hands. It is going to go down relatively uncontested, and that is because Team Liquid playing for the retake. They have a Seekers. Mm. We're screaming at Bladestorm, they have a way in an opening. They're trying to work out the best approach to this, but FBX is set, the Trailblaze is destroyed, and Zipan's trying to lead the line with this aggression coming out. Yeah, the thing is, if they just descend Chaos over on the side, it might be Yumpy who can capitalize on it. And talking about it, all his blades, all his daggers already went past. It doesn't change the matter of fact that Shadow blinds them all, but Chao is there to save the day. Still, a two versus two that is winnable for Link and Cryptics, but most definitely not easy. Angel's just waiting for the Diffuser to come in, and here comes the Flash, but the ult of Xiao could save it, and it most definitely does. They pay attention to so and therefore Angel can prevail the first sign of life for FPX it's not yet sending them into a disastrous realm of grief but they're getting into the right direction yeah tough play for Team Liquid they wanted to play off of the site they wanted to play in for the retake but Xiao was able to get so much information that recon data pulses that many players so good for him to play off. Immediately gets that ultimate. The state of play changes for him. He plays back. And Angel just spots, I think, the top of the gun from Soulcast as he was pushing forwards. Really nice Fun round for FBX. Used an ultimate, but so did Team Liquid. Now a rolling thunder available for Shadow. How is he going to use it? How is he going to break onto the site? And of course, the operate for Yampi can't be missed on like the first shot. Oh, and Richter scale to the max as they're trying to push over from Garage, immediately entering the seaside, and poor uh, Yampi cannot stand a chance. But Cryptix is still lurking around the position. Yep, those cages are somewhat helpful, but definitely not securing his survival. This is the seaside taken with ease by FPX. Managed to get the spike planted, and the Neural Theft is going to show all of these Team Liquid players playing more towards Sea Link. There's no wraparound, and even then, you've got a tripwire down C long towards Dragon. That's going to show up anybody that goes for a flank. Team Liquid just deciding they're not interested. And I got to say, Link looks nice today. I think it's the, it's the haircut and the glasses, man. It's a. Uh, <laughs> he's just got style. The he haircut? uses confidence. Wait, did he have hair before? 
I think he, he shaved it all off in Reykjavik. Oh. <laughs> Why? He went. I, I, it worked after, after the, the frankly embarrassing loss to version one, which Team Liquid should definitely been winning. He came back. He clutched out, and I, honestly, the link stonks have gone right up since he's had his hair cut. I mean, it's a great look. <laughs> Is it some some sort of penance? <laughs> the sense of we lost shaving the hair. Yeah, it's like the opposite of, um, is it Goliath oh, with the hair? Off. We had that it shaved off there. and lost all of his strength. Is it really? I, I have to be honest with you, I don't know. I would like to say something it's, more, but... Oh. It's some Greek oh, tragedy, this but this is looking to be a, a CIS tragedy for Epi. Oh, not too bad this round, actually, for Epi. It's a good one for them to win off. They used the Rolling Thunder, they used the Hunter's Fury, now a Showstopper. If they could keep these executes going well with these ultimates, I'd be able to sort of break on through, and there's not really that much coming online anytime soon for Team Liquid, at least, either. Cage triggered. Well, it's still a few more obstacles on the way for Liquid to reach the Mount Olympus in Berlin. There's a few more here and there, different regions, different teams, all of that. But for now, they seem to be somewhat on the right track, as though FPX are swift and fast over on the seaside. Once more, gain control in a quick way. Yampi's playing around the smoke, and Demosik is... Come on, mate, this, this this trick is too cheap. I've, I've seen it a few times by now, so he keeps on lurking in mid. Here's a bit of the judge nearby, but Yampi should be now taking out the equation. Most definitely he is. Demosik keeps the lurkers away, and the side's safe. Dolcast breaking the tripwire means that Dimasic can't play his little games. And Scream trying to close in the distance on the side. <gasps> nice use of the cyber no. cage to make his way through. Him and Cryptics have been playing no. off each other so well. It keeps on going for Scream. And Soulcast there to finally chase up. The fifth round for them. It's just as FBX are starting to pull a few rounds together, build a little bit of momentum. It dissipates at the hands of Team Liquid yet again. It looked like they absolutely locked it down and they had all those walls fortified, but none of that. Entering back over the CT spawn in combination with all the breach abilities, the flash that is coming in as a support. It's working all fine and dandy and got them the fifth. And obviously, Scream is having a brilliant day so far. Or already yesterday against BDS, he was looking sharp. Seems to be happening once more. That goes there. Yeah, not a bad day. Not a bad day so far. Sorry, I, I realized that talking and turning my mic off to cough was really stupid of me. And Scream takes a jewel, and it wasn't stupid of Angel because he manages to find it. Was able to find gaps against Cenid. Certainly when Cenid had the operator. If he could do the same on this map, that would be great. Yeah. But Yampi just manages to sliver out of the sight just as Soulcast goes down. But he comes back. <gasps> no he cancels way. it. Oh, no he gets way. onto Dimasek, and luckily it's traded out. I haven't seen that since Shinobi did it for Cloud9. That's absolutely wild. And, well, it's still not giving him too much. <laughs> well, he was a little too eager there, Angel. No way this is working. The rolling thunder's coming in, and the earth is shaking. Sippin' is taking out as well, and Link's on it. He might just store it. Definitely goes for it. He's taking a bit of time. Half it is, but the wall bank's too easy for a shout. It was costly once more for FPX, even if it worked. Oh, and lucky for Link, that was so well played. The Rolling Thunder just sticks Zipan up in stasis right in that corner. He wasn't going anywhere, but this is perfect stuff. Maybe we didn't see Shadow fully utilize the Breach in the last map, but this Rolling Thunder is placed perfectly. A lot easier to do that. But yeah, Zipan trying to boost himself up, make him a harder target. Wasn't going to work, but Shao, the recon dad, getting that information, wall banging through that box. A smart clutch for him in the end and needed for FPX. And this is one of the niche little details about the new breach, by the way, because I'm quite convinced that the old Rolling Thunder would have never gotten race in this case. That's so important. Yeah, maybe. It's, it, it's, it's not wider, but it's more square. It's not yeah. as cone-shaped. Right, exactly. This is the thing. This is the most crucial thing about the new one, but... Anyway, Angel has taken a bit of control already through his teleport. Shadow's Spike taking planted. this plant down on the ground. And yet again, I mean, FPX are fast over there. On any side they go, it's pretty much always in a few first seconds that they have conquered it. But Cryptics and his boys are trying to retake the territory that they have lost. 
And the gravitas of such a round where FPX is once more coming back again and again is so goddamn important. It seems like they've already set out all the charge. Scream's going in fast. Finds the first. Nope, it's not happening. Angel is taking him out with ease. And it seems like they're backing off here. Yeah, three player saves. It's an interesting one, but it just means that there's no point wasting it in chances like that. Like 10 seconds left on the defuse now. Makes sense for Team Liquid to not waste opportunities on losing guns, going fast into ecos. Keeps their economy strong. And certainly with Yampi still having the operator in hand, it means that FPX even winning these rounds don't get one for free playing up against an eco. Which really hasn't happened to Team Liquid at all. Just a few oh, more rounds. Nice we'll be entering Team Liquid's attack. That goes there. And FPX have done well to pull this back. Last four this, out of five rounds for them. And because Team Liquid oh, saved, the full buy is still available here. I wonder if they're going to play as passive as they have on the A site as well. We might not need to now. Like, Yampi gets her first kill onto Shadow, rolling Thunder. FBX have been relying on these ultimates to break onto sites quite a lot. It's going to be a big one missed. And Yampi is always surprising us with new agent picks. You saw it over the course of Stage 2 as well, where he suddenly joined Killjoy over on this map. Omen seems to be fitting in as well with the kind of versatile approach he can do. Zippin, in the meantime, has to get rid of the dart in his body, but it doesn't change. The theme stick feels quite decent over the course of this map. Still a good aiming coming for Cryptics, but Link is within the shots. The defense exactly once more are. weakened and information gained. Scream's not even afraid to hold his ground. He's not going to remain in a scary position, total opposite, and Soulcast is waiting. Two flashes he has to coordinate himself with Scream, but Spike has hit the ground, and this obviously causes issues on the side of Liquid. You don't want to see FPX gain momentum and go close to a tie. As slowly and steady, they ready up for a plan. Soulcast still has a second one, and then it's a surprise from Scream that is needed. He would have to dash and also could do an updraft. Second flash is in, finds the first with ease, knows about the second and behind Steam is sick as well. Excellent coordination by both parties. And this is why I think the new version of Sky is so good. Liquid playing it patiently. I don't think FBX were expecting Soulcast to have both of his flashes readily available. The first one, almost like a bait. FBX are like, oh, they used the flash. They don't have anything now. Just sit tight, hold the angle. Then the second one, Scream manages to dash in and follow up on the kills. Superb stuff from them. It catches both with the flash. It gets the information needed. And this is what I mean. This yes. Team Liquid, when it plays it's off of here. utility from each other, it is incredibly tight. FPX do relatively similar stuff. But right now, certainly with Team Liquid qualifying for Reykjavik, the momentum is more in their favor, and so are the results. But FPX is still just a couple of rounds behind. And this feels way much more on the edge than the game versus Ascent. Whenever it was Ascent was having a proper lead, it always felt it was absolute dominance. And at that point in time, it doesn't seem to be the case. Shadow, though, the Rolling Thunder coming over on the seaside. Obviously, this is an easy way to control that position. And all of the players of FBX are getting ready. And as we see, there's, there's nothing really that Team Liquid can bring when it comes down to old surely it's nice and great to have those seekers that's helpful but soulcast already falling a very unhappy scenario as he's carrying such viable utility but scream we know that he can do scream things we know that he's individually capable of retaking the site pretty much on his own in such scenarios as yumpy's getting closer the cages are certainly getting away but there are too many enemies around him too many enemies in his crosshair and at the end of the day not even a scream can save it I was a bit worried with Zipan dropping to the ground there that he wouldn't be fully accurate, but he's Last up against a classic and manages hand. to win out. It is kind of crazy that Team Liquid are so comfortable to go for full five versus five retakes and make it as close as that. Somehow they're able to find a space off each other. Link gets one, is traded out. And maybe a Scream wasn't 30 HP and wasn't forced to use the classic in that situation. And maybe it wouldn't have gone so sour for them. But FBX might be able to make this a six all half, all things considered. Which is a lot better than what they managed, certainly, against Ascent.
was on a waiting as we're going for this technical timeout and yeah it's an interesting game overall fpx have had a lot of tough stuff to deal with it's always hard to lose such an impactful game in a close best of three fashion and then come back up against a freshly faced team liquid that at least have a win under their belt recently with bds which overall is a pretty good result right zesh i'm fully with you on that i mean the, the thing the thing is right the the back and forth we have seen right here for this game which is more of a periodical back and forth it, it, it feels very much like i am just not so certain if we're gonna see once more this 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 kind of liquid that can play off of scream in that sense because we once more saw the chaos that just happened over a garage for example is something they seemingly have a bit of problem then coordinating with back on the c site and retake is a possibility right i think we both know retake is something you can't play but you need the right kind of steps to retake such control and this seemed to be missing occasionally here from time to time yeah, it's always a bit of a risky play to fully bank on that. If you can't break down the numbers of FPX before they hit a site, then you are going in fully aware that you have to be the attacking side almost. Now, you can't really question Team Liquid's utility play. It's some of the tightest that we've seen, besting the likes of FPX in some cases, but also BDS that are also a team that might not necessarily get the same recognition as the top teams, but still quite good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Uh, BDS is, is a case that I that I haven't fully resolved yet due to the fact that I still feel like it's odd to see that they were such early adapters, for example, in stage two, if I remember correctly, with picking up Astra and such. But at the same time, they're, they're failing to really then progress at, at the point where we're at right now. Instant jewels coming in and the stinger, the stinger of Soulcast. Suddenly, this looks like a round that really FPX should have been taking. I'm not quite working out. Shower's oh the last boy. alive. There's everything thrown at him. Well, <laughs> we come back, and honestly, that round shorter than the break was. Switching Pretty much, sides. indeed. Crazy stuff that we sometimes experience. I mean, those rounds are so fast, and they take such a long build-up. It's, it's always wild to see such things, really. I, I have to say, it's... Insane stuff. It's really insane stuff. And, and sometimes, just play it like that. Scream with one, goes on. Soulcast is supporting him with the little stinger. And then we're running into a meat grinder there. And I have to say, this meat grinder, called Team Liquid, <laughs> can be very annoying at times. At least FPX get to defend now a little bit. Might be a bit of a challenge to deal with how the utility gets thrown out. The breach sky combination isn't one that you typically see from a lot of these pro teams, but it is a common recipe for Team Liquid. I like the trailblazers. Usually they have this little cute play where they trailblazer somebody, stun them, and then instantly footline the stunned person just to make sure that they're CC'd to some capacity or crowd controlled. But there is a lot of oomph behind Team Liquid's play overall. And they want to go towards the A site. Dimasix there waiting. He's had some incredible maps, certainly through Challenges 1 here. But uh, across Ascend, maybe not the same amount of impact as we saw in that G2 game, perhaps. Making sure, in this case, that they're hitting the trip wires of Dimasix, but well... At that point in time, they're more towards the side of A. Taking a bit of short control, this is what we're seeing Demasic doing. Right now, the smoke of Angel has landed over on a short. They take a bit of garage control. Sippin is not sure what's on his right-hand side. And as now the little trailblazer's coming left. in. It's not looking too good, but does Sippin know that they're actually that far away? No, it's looking once more dangerous here from the side of Liquid. Because now, as you see, Yampi's taking out him, more control towards the side of C might be taken as Shadow right clicks. The control stays in the hands of FBX, but for how long? 10 seconds to get the spike down, Dimas, it goes on and on, but Shadow is having to line up for them all, the triple back in the corner. Nobody paid attention, this is what you get. They line up perfectly. Stars lining for FPX and winning this next round, depending on if Team Liquid force up, would bring us on as even, which is kind of crazy when you look at the kills. Scream is miles ahead than anybody else, and Dimasix actually the one with equal the kills of Zip and Show, but the higher ACS overall. 
And maybe that's a, a good way for FPX to pull back this lead. You can see in the bottom of your screen that Team Liquid, they won the pistol, they won the round after, then the full buy. And just that four ma uh, round buffer has been so useful for them overall. I can't help but think if FPX could do something similar, it can then put the pressure onto Team Liquid. Yes, the thing is, FBX from now on will pinpoint the issue of, of Team Liquid and will pretty much, let's say, eradicate them at that point on. As we saw in the past, Angel and Co. fall short against some of those faster approaches from their opponents. Against Ascent, sometimes they didn't seem to deal with the chaos, and talking about chaos, it might just all come down to the seaside. Yeah, Mystic spraying in from distance. He finds Soulcast at least. Making sure that these Team Liquid players are going to be punished a little bit more. I think they kind of did what they wanted to. They wanted to pick up the orb and farm up these ultimates as soon as they can. Maybe that was more important for Team Liquid than anything else. So they managed to do that. Unfortunately, they did lose the spike down C lobby. And Yampi attempting a play that Xiao has absolutely no interest in. He gets silenced and now it's all up to scream with the Sheriff. I mean, of course, it would be a scream kind of play. But let's say the chances are fairly low. Shao's even going for the body shots and the burst. And we're back to a tied up situation between FBX and Team Liquid. Now it's getting interesting. The weaponry to the full extent on the prawns and horse side. And this is where I'm very excited if they just play it around Scream in that sense that they just oh, basically allow him to open up the side with the swift and speedy approach he can obviously bring to the table and from that point on play off of that. This is obviously the thing that I'm looking forward the most the to, but Shadow, here. I think he's not really interested in the A side pushes from the start on. Oh boy. We saw a lot of that yesterday against BDS. Breach utility being used and Yampi being able to shroud step between it. Now, Scream might not necessarily want to push any further. There's no tripwire here, but there is two big, burly FPX players ready to take a duel. Dimisic happy to bait himself off, and Scream oh. manages to get out as well as Soulcast trading. What on earth was that? Yeah. And Zipan just goes for the widest peak to right that wrong, and it makes it even worse. A wicked play at that point in time. Excellent coordination, and so they pivot towards the victory and towards an eighth. One Once those remaining. proper big weapons come out, maybe even a flawless, but Angel is not really interested in that. Once that give him this psychological advantage. Spike planted. But the rifle he has, something that would be considered worth saving at that point in time. Even if it's an eye on one, it's worth saving. Trip by it. Does he want to break it? <laughs> Nobody's really going to actually push him, but as soon as he breaks it, the hunting horns are going to come through. And then immediately <laughs> Team Liquid are just going to rush after him. So better to stay put. Don't get too paranoid. He also has a shrouded step, which, to be honest, it's a little bit more expensive than it used to be. Probably worth holding on to. And it should mean that Team Liquid, uh, FPX even, will be able to at least buy up again in this next round. But that's a horrible one to lose. That is... A, a glaring opportunity, overzealous, pushing out into open areas and losing jewels against Liquid. It was just not necessary for FBX. Yeah, I feel you on that one. The, the, the peak in mid against the Scream, who seems so vulnerable, but at the end of the day, do you imagine mid to be so weakly fortified? It goes here. I, I don't see that. I, I genuinely don't see that, but it's all the side of FBX. We got that proper weaponry. There in their hands, but this is the oh, crucial this one. This is where everything could pivot towards the victory for Team Liquid if they take this one with full might. Say full might, but it's a slow start. It's the same play as we saw before, but maybe MP can do something with it. FPX clearly haven't really taken on to this so far, but the Paranoia is going to hit the Aldron, but it still catches him. Who's going to try and fake teleport, get the timings right, but I don't know how much FPX are realistically going to fall for that play from Yampi. He's 19 HP, going to peek out, the boom bot is going to scare him. Uh -oh. And now with no shrouded steps, he's out in the open and does eventually fall. Yeah, and not only him, it is Green joining that. As they shame the same coffin, Soulcast has been sneaking around, but doesn't hit his shots. It's so unfortunate for him as...
it seemed like the flank might pay it off, and here it comes. Link got a few players coming towards him. He seems like he's trying to make work off of that, but it was actually Shadow. My bad. Doesn't change the matter of fact that Link is still falling. Well, the back and forth. Welcome back to the show. 8 to 8, 9 to 9. When is overtime going to come in? At least we have. It was a good series to watch between FPX and Ascend, but even though it's a full best of three, you can't really say it was close. Because Ascend dominated one map, FPX dominated the other. And on Haven, it was more of a toss up, but realistically, FPX didn't get too close to stopping Ascend. Here, it's looking like he can go all of the way, and maybe a bit of instilled confidence could come back for FPX. This isn't their map pick, it's Liquids. But FBX picked to play Ascent after this, which I think is a real big balls move considering Team Liquid had such a, a winning streak on that map. And even now, FBX is oh, adding more fuel to the fire for this no. win. And Shao's lined up too with a Hunter's Fury. The last one doesn't actually kill Link. But look at all of those FBX players that are looking for him. It seems like I know there's a exactly warrant out of this man. And Cryptix is actually using his ult on this. One more frag, by the way, then Link is going to be ready to use the Rolling Thunder. Cryptix is also joining that, but, well, this double is not going to let you go that easily. 45 points of health, done and dusted. Well, the lead is there for FPX. You see, though, the ults that are ready for Team Liquid could be a quite easy affair right here to once more gain a victory. Then we're back to the 9 to 9. Yeah, let's see what the money is like for Team Liquid. And a tactical pause is required. This could go either way, even though FPX have taken this lead. I wouldn't necessarily say that it is out of question that they take this chance to really sort of pile on the hurt. But nope, this is Sleggy tuning in with the guys. It's like, guys, guys, slow club members, we're, we're having a meeting. We need to we need to win this game to qualify. Okay, that is all. Bye, guys. <laughs> nah, he's probably got a lot more to say. <laughs> I remember when Sleegy is always trying to make VOD reviews, which I would very much like to watch. His internet is always suffering. He's having massive package loss, and it feels like you watch more YouTube ads than actual <laughs> VODs from VCT. Oh, bless him. Yeah, I do bless him, but the poor lad is just... <laughs> oh, yeah, I, th I think he's very happy to be in the facility. Let's say it that way. Yeah, he's done us proud. It was a good interview early on today just to sort of say and confirm that Yampi's staying with this team. There's no second thoughts going back to CS. He's fully committed to Valorant. I think is what a lot of people wanted to hear. Whilst Yampi's maybe not lit the world on fire with his jet, some of the plays of his career so far have certainly been not questionable, but odd. I think very unorthodox. I really vibe with him on Omen. And I certainly vibe with him when he's playing the judge. That's going to be up on this attack. And maybe he's going to try and sneak into this spot again. And he's decided against it, I think, because he got caught out from FKX last time. He's actually just going to play a little bit more flat-footed. Smoke off towards A. Actually, a lot of utility has been forced towards the A site, but the spike is leaning towards C. Blocking site. Way. Looking towards what's going on. That C site is going to be hit. Angel sees everything he needs to see, and that includes a screen with his blade storm out. The utility is oh. so good to slow them down, but Zipan, I don't think Liquid are expecting to peek off of that, but it, Zipan does go for it. In fact, he's leaning oh, further horrible. wider. The aftershock is going to scare more of these Team Liquid players away, but they do manage to find a gap to escape. Shao is coming in with a flank at the A side. It's basically. Standing. Been secured the entire Spike time. Down. Nobody's coming in with a flank. This leads Yampi to be all on his own. And I mean, you gotta say, right? A jet and a judge, that's a different sort of story. This time around, at least one frag he gets, but... Hold on, hold on a second. This guy's still alive, finally. Being eliminated. And here are the double digits. FPX winning on this map would be pretty unfortunate for Team Liquid. And I do feel like Team Liquid overall is a team that I personally have been very critical of because the, the challenger stage of Stage 2, they looked okay, they looked decent. Right. And the EMEA playoffs, they looked the, like the best team in the world with how they were playing. They seemed to really find their form. That form wasn't really matched once we got to Reykjavik. It was a really good solid finish. Fourth place overall worldwide is nothing to really scoff at. 
Certainly watching how this Team Liquid team qualified to get there. You maybe think they could have gone a little bit further, but this FPX team has a lot to say as well. Doesn't necessarily want to be given up on. And this is a full buy for Team Liquid, breaking their way into the B site. It's keenly watched by these FPX players, but Scream's looking for a fight. Absolutely. And as you see, obviously Scream is an individual that you could call bellicose from time to time and a very unyielding individual that you have to really punch in the face to get him out of the way. I've got your trade. But Eris are getting the control over on the B side. Also, the Seekers are coming in. Sippin is looking for more, but he's backing off for the moment as Soulcast is trying to come with a push, but absolutely is being denied. Scream, seven bullets in the max. Not going to be easy to find a multi-kill, but obviously we know what kind of capacities this man has. Ooh. Together with Cryptics, they make it work with ease. Has the pincer in them. Take remaining. a look at Yampiev. That's a flank by the book, and this brings them number nine. Lovely utility from Team Liquid. Yampi also playing mind games over towards A, but it works out. He finds the opening. And a really nicely paced round for Team Liquid overall. It was nice and slow. They found their way onto the B site and they held One back this FPX team. Perfect util. The stun was on for Angel. It was just the final kill of many where utility was there to set them up. And whilst you might not necessarily be looking at the kills for Team Liquid, spoiler alert, screams at the top of the frags. Also, the assists coming out of these players is super important. Their support and backbone is incredible. And they could tie up the rounds if Team Liquid take this next one, but there's a full buy and a lot of ultimates for FPX waiting. And as they casually seem to stroll over to a that casual stroll might be interrupted by a white peak of shao they're pretty much lining up and the late peak coming in slow and steady that's absolute success and um, angel, angel? Uh, his mouse disconnected or something for sure Cramped yeah, in the he, hand. he didn't really react overall his mouse looking a bit further down One but it's okay remaining. the rest of his team has this on lockdown it's just going to be soul cast so he needs a second to reset, he can do, and it's an 11th for FPX. A lot of these A-Jewels have mostly been won out from the defended side, to be honest. Team Liquid haven't been able to aggressively pressure certain areas of the map, and it's a terrible way to do it for Liquid lining up like that. But Xiao is unwavering from this position. Cryptix finds an opening, but that's all he's realistically going to find. Xiao has been playing well this series. He's been playing well across the day, to be honest. It's nice to be able to point him out as a particular player. And Eco is still there for Team Liquid. Nero Theft rolling from the great way to break on the site. A bit more pace for this A hit. But Xiao is still scary in this position. And this is the thing. 11 to 9 can turn around so swiftly. Even if FBX only need two, it's a matter of seconds where Team Liquid will suddenly be revitalized with a push that seemingly is looking interesting to come down to the A side. Once more, the paranoia should deny vision, but the chaos descends over on A, and that entire chaos, Scream still getting Xiao, but Shadow's gonna swing, finds the first, and this is obviously the Belgian being absolutely Whoa. obliterated. The flash has worked by the book, but Shadow is still in it. Talking about it, one more remains out is Link. Could technically speaking do something with his ult, but he says, bye bye A side, I'm not looking for it, but Team Sink. Sink is having it. Whew. Close he one. knew that that play was coming. He was prepped to watch it. And well played from Angel on 10 HP to just be like, I'm, I'm off. I'm getting out of here. So actually taking over Scream is a real important thing to note because Scream was dominating 8 and 0 at the start of this half. After four rounds, I think it was. It's a good mental for FBX to be able to come back after a grueling day of games. And this was a good opening to find that kill. But nice of FPX to immediately be able to clear it up and do a bit further. Oh, well, here comes the flash. And I'm not quite sure if it even was a team flash at that point. Not certain, but nevertheless, not that crucial. Again, a little bit of a deja vu I have here, Ryan, in front of the gates of A. This time, FPX are playing way off of it. They do have a Hunter's Fury. Maybe it's a case if they hear that spike being planted, other than Zipan, he's going to try and stop it. They can maybe throw in the ultimate at that point. Uh -oh. 
Zipan has found himself in a real tough position. He's separated from these Team Liquid players and the Rolling Thunder is about to get onto Angel. Zipan fully hit, is using that util no. and he's still able to find those kills. It's absolutely absurd. The man can be stunned and it's still ice cold. The frags are coming in and Angel is closing the chapter. It's called Haven and it's going in favor 